Whether you are new to going gray or halfway there, you might be making some of these gray hair transition mistakes and they can negatively impact your experience and your outcome. Hi, I'm Katie from katiegoesplatinum.com. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Going gray from dyed hair can be liberating and fun, but like any journey, it has its pitfalls, both emotional and physical. The secret is to avoid as many of these pitfalls as possible because let's face it, if your journey goes smoothly, you're more likely to stick with it and reach your ultimate goal, which is a beautiful head of naturally silver hair. So let's dive right into some of the things that you'll want to know about going gray from dyed hair and some of the mistakes that you will definitely want to avoid. Before I get started, I just wanted to suggest that if you find this video helpful, fun, or informative, please do give it a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. One of the biggest mistakes I see right now is women listening to their friends' opinions. Listening to your friends' opinions is one of the number one things you can do to derail having a great gray hair transition or even doing it at all. So what you should do is do not ask for their opinion. Do not tell them that you're going gray. Just go ahead and start your transition. If you announce your intention to go gray to a friend, even a very dear close friend that you've told all your other secrets to, there is a very high likelihood that she will react negatively. And that is because the vast majority of women still dye their hair and they do tend to feel insecure or threatened when a friend mentions that they are going to take a completely different path. The best way to forestall that is don't even mention it, just start doing it. Now, the second part of the problem can happen, which is your friend sees you going gray and decides to give you her unsolicited opinion about that. So let's act that out. Your friend says, I think your brunette hair looks so much better. You're gonna look terrible if you go gray. The best thing to say in that scenario is, well, I'm really happy about going gray and I know I'm just going to love it. Another scenario is your friend says, oh, are you going gray? And you say, yes, I am. Isn't it wonderful? I'm so excited. That way you let them know right away you're excited and if they have an ounce of politeness in them, they will not give a negative opinion. If they do give it a negative opinion, the best thing to do is to say, well, I love it and that's really all that matters. I'll be doing a video soon with more tips and suggestions on how to handle these types of comments, but the best thing is just to make it clear that you love it. And if you really have to, if a friend is being persistent and telling you her negative thoughts about your gray hair transition, you might just have to come right out and say, I'm sorry, but the subject of my gray hair is off limits. The second biggest mistake women make when they go gray is not understanding themselves well, not understanding what they want or they need from this gray hair transition. If you don't know yourself very well and what you want and what you desire, when you choose a method of going gray, you might choose one that is not suited for you, for your personality or your temperament. If you choose a method of going gray that doesn't work for you, you're going to have a negative experience. If you have a negative experience, you're more likely to give up and go back to the dye. And there's nothing wrong with going back to the dye, but think about why you first decided to go gray. You must have had some good reasons since it's still not the easiest thing in the world to do. So you wanna think about those reasons that you chose to go gray. What is the why that you're going gray? Is it because of hair dye allergies? Is it because you're just sick and tired of spending the time and the money? Is it because you're tired of hiding a part of yourself? I mean, these are all the kinds of questions you want to ask yourself. Why are you going gray? because if you understand the why, it's going to make it much easier to do it. You also want to think about how can I go gray in a way that is comfortable for me? For example, for me, going gray slowly was the right choice. I could not bear the thought of going from brunette hair to gray hair in one day. It, it's just not my personality. For some of you, the idea of going gray slowly sounds like a nightmare. Do you want to keep your hair short or long? That is also an important thing to know. What condition is your hair in? Is it healthy or is it very, very damaged? Obviously there are other questions that you can ask yourself, but knowing yourself and really thinking about it will make things easier for you. Number three is not researching different transition methods before you begin. Each method of going gray has its pros and cons, so you need to decide which method of going gray has enough pros to make the cons worthwhile for you. Now, if you want to research different methods of going gray, I have a blog post about all the different ways to go gray. I'll link to it in the show notes and up here. But in the meantime, here are just a few examples. Going gray cold turkey with longer hair. This is a fantastic method for somebody like me who did not want to cut her hair, did not want to keep dyeing it, and did not want to go gray quickly. But it's a terrible solution for somebody who would want to go gray quickly and gracefully. 
you will be dealing with a demarcation line and for some people that is not something that they want to do. Going gray with a buzz cut. This is a fantastic option for somebody who wants to go gray super quickly and easily and inexpensively. But it's a terrible option for somebody who hates the way she looks with short hair or would be traumatized by going gray overnight. Going gray with a salon transition. This is a great way to go gray if you have healthy and or lighter colored hair and you don't mind spending a little money to transition and also if you are happy with the idea of going gray quickly. But it is not a great option for you if you have severely damaged hair or very, very dark brunette hair because the risk of damage or hair loss is real. It's also not a great option if you need to watch your finances as you usually have some follow-up visits that need to happen and some special products that you might need to make sure your hair looks its best. Those are just a few examples, obviously, because like I said, there are many different ways to go gray and many different ways to do it and many different pros and cons. If you would like to find out more about all the different ways to go gray and their pros and cons and get a list of questions to ask yourself about which method will work best for you, definitely make sure to check out my latest ebook, Every Which Way to Go Gray. It is a 72 page downloadable ebook. You can print it in the comfort of your own home and it gives you all the tips and tricks to make your transition go as smoothly as possible. For a limited time only, I'm offering a $10 off discount. I will put the link in the show notes below, so make sure to check that out if you haven't done so already. The fourth biggest mistake that women make when they transition to gray hair is feeling like they have to get rid of all of their old products immediately. Now, a lot of us feel like once we go gray, we need to discard all the products that we're using on our hair and start fresh with gray friendly products. If your current shampoo and conditioner are giving you the results that you want, you are totally free to keep using them until they run out. The only product that you might need to buy shortly after deciding to go gray is blue shampoo and this is only applicable to brunettes who are going to go gray cold turkey. The reason is that as your brunette hair dye fades, it's very likely to take on brassy orange tones and blue shampoo will neutralize those orange tones and make your hair look fantastic. It will also brighten your silver, so that's a cool bonus. The one I used was Joico Color Balance Blue Shampoo and it did wonders for my hair and it made my transition easier. If your hair is partially or fully gray, then you might want to think about getting a purple shampoo only if your hair is taking on yellow tones. If it's not, you don't need to worry about it. And if it doesn't bother you, you also don't need to worry about it. But if you're like me and the yellow tones bother you, you might want to consider getting a purple shampoo, using it maybe once a week, and always following up with a deep conditioner because the purple shampoo can tend to be drying. I actually prefer to use the Bold Unique shampoo and conditioner because when you use them together, there's no need for a deep conditioner. It's very, very moisturizing. But I have others I like as well. I'll link to those in the show notes below. Sticking with an unsupportive or inexperienced stylist. One of the best ways to derail your gray hair transition is by sticking with a stylist who reacts super negatively to your desire to go gray. If that happens, it's best to start looking for a new stylist because believe me, it's a very rare instance where you can actually convince them that this is the right choice for you. You don't need that kind of negativity or judgment in your life. It's already a big leap of faith to decide to go gray in our culture. So you want somebody who's gonna support you and figure out ways to help this transition go easily for you. You want a stylist who is not only supportive and encouraging, but also, if possible, experienced in dealing with gray hair transitions. Now, I have a directory on my site that's called the Gray Friendly Salon Directory, and it consists of salons that have either chosen to advertise with me or salons that have been recommended to me by my fellow Silver Sisters, and they are friendly to gray hair. Now, not all of them are going to be able to transition you to gray hair using salon methods. So if that's what you're interested in, make sure you call ahead of time and find out if they have experience doing that. Don't be shy because this is your hair and your money. Call the salon first. Ask them, is this a gray friendly salon? Let them know I am going gray and I want a stylist who will support me that way. And if you want a salon transition, make sure you call and ask directly, are your stylists experienced with transitioning women from dyed hair to gray hair? That is an important question to ask. 
A reputable salon that does gray hair transitions will not take you on as a client if they feel that your hair is too damaged. So you'll want to make sure they give you an appointment in advance where they can check out your hair, check out how damaged it is, if it's damaged at all, and also how dark it is because the darker the hair, the harder it is to transition via salon methods and the more damage that can occur because of bleaching. Whatever you do, do not put your hair in the hands of an inexperienced or unsupportive stylist. There are many, many wonderful, experienced and supportive stylists out there, and I'm sure you'll be able to find one that can help you. Number six, tossing out all your old clothes and makeup once you've decided to go gray. A lot of women do this because they think all of their color choices will have to change, and that is not always the case. Do you wanna experiment with new colors? Please do so, but you might regret it if you get some of your favorite clothes or makeup colors while you're still transitioning. Number seven, not protecting your newly silver hair from yellowing. Now, not everybody will get yellowing in their gray hair, but for those of you with fine gray hair like me, we are more prone to it, and you might wanna to try to forestall any yellowing as soon as you can. I have an article about yellowing that I will link to in the show notes below, but in the meantime, here are a few of my tips. Invest in an Aqua Bliss shower filter head. They are very easy to use, and they have replaceable cartridges that filter out hard water that can lead to yellowing in your gray hair. Protect your hair from the sun. You can do this through using a UV protectant such as Seam Blowout Cream and also using a sun protecting hat. I use a wide brimmed hat. I think it's by Wallaroo. I'll put it up here if that's the case. And it has UV protection built right into it. I love it and I do not go on a walk without it. Protect your hair from the heat. In other words, if you're using a hot tool, make sure you always use a thermal protectant such as the Scene Blowout Cream. Those are just a few ways you can protect your gray hair from yellowing. Like I said, you can see my blog post for more tips and tricks. Number eight, not having a support group. As we all know, going gray can be an isolating experience because for many of us, our friends are not doing this. So one of the number one things to do is to find your support group. I am the co-admin of a Facebook group called Silver Revolution. And we have, I think, over 25,000 members now. And in this group, you can make a post if you want to, or you can just comment and you can support each other on your journey to naturally silver hair. I can't overstate how important this is. And there are support groups out there for everybody. There are support groups for women with curly hair going gray. There are support groups for women who don't like to wear makeup and are going gray. And there are support groups for women who do like to make wear makeup and are going gray. Some groups are more pleasant than others. Some groups have very stringent rules. Other groups have not as many rules. Really, which one you choose is up to you. Just to make a plug for my own group, we get told a lot that we are the most supportive and friendly group out there. But what can I say? We try really hard to do that and to filter out any negativity if possible. Another way to not feel so lonely on this journey is to sign up for my newsletter. In my newsletter, I send out weekly tips and tricks for how to go gray, how to deal with the ups and downs of going gray, and how to take care of your gray hair. I'll also provide a link for that below. Now, you also can look among your own friend group and find out who is going to support you in this journey. Do you want to be around friends who are negative and dragging you down about your decision? No, I'm not saying you need to end those friendships, but you might want to spend less time with the people who are making you feel bad about your decision to go gray while you're going gray. Believe me, you'll be surprised once you're all done how many of them will see that they've made a mistake and they'll come up to you and tell you how much they love your gray hair and how they didn't think they would like it at first and now they do. If you have friends who are super supportive of everything you do and positive people and they like you no matter what you do, those are the people you wanna spend most of your time with because you will need all the positivity and support that you can get. Believe me, having a support group makes all the difference and will make your transition to gray hair so much more pleasant. Number nine, not being gentle with your gray hair. Gray hair is a bit more fragile than colored hair and it has a lot less elasticity, so you need to be a little more gentle with it. Here are a few ways to be more gentle with your gray hair. Number one, sleep on a silk pillowcase. I was a little skeptical about the idea of using a silk pillowcase at first, but it really does help. When you have a silk pillowcase, your hair glides softly across the pillow at night as opposed to getting all bunched up. So when you wake up in the morning, you have less frizz, less tangles, and less split ends. Number two, before air drying your hair or blow drying it, make sure to wrap it up first in either a microfiber towel or a t-shirt towel and let it dry for about 10 to 15 minutes. And when you're ready to move on to the next step of your styling process, instead of vigorously rubbing your hair with your towel, take the towel and just kind of gently 
squeeze your hair with the towel to remove excess moisture. Number three, if you absolutely must use heat tools, make sure to always use a thermal protectant first and to put your heat tool on the lowest possible setting or even better, at the no heat setting because this will protect your hair from yellowing and it will also stop hair breakage. Number 10, giving up too soon because you don't like the way your gray hair color looks coming in. I know it takes some effort, but if you can, be patient and wait until all of the color is cut off before you decide whether or not you like your gray hair. And even if that happens and you're not happy, what you might wanna do is give it a month and see if that's really how you feel because you put a lot of time and effort into going gray. Now, if you wait a month and you still hate the color of your hair, you don't have to be stuck with it. You can either go back to the dye, which there is no shame in doing at all, or you can try some different methods. I have an article about what to do if you hate your gray hair, and it gives you suggestions about perhaps getting low lights or highlights or trying other methods with your stylist to help you figure out a way that you can love your gray hair. Please tell me some of your favorite gray hair transition tips, tricks, and mistakes to avoid in the comment section below. And now I'm going to leave you another video to watch after this one that is about all of the pros and cons of going gray so you can make sure that you're making the right choice for you. So make sure to watch that video next. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you can get notified next time I do a new video. Thank you so much for being here today.